Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining another episode of Mold Talks. I'm your host, Michael Rubino. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Melissa Bologna. Melissa is an actress, a model, also an entrepreneur, uh, owner of the company Beauty and the Broth. And we're going to get into all that and, and circle back to that for sure. But actually, Melissa is here to share her story uh, with respects to mold. So, Melissa, thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time and creating this awareness. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. As I told you offline, I've become quite obsessed with mold and just learning everything there is to know about it because this whole experience rocked my world. And I've been searching for answers to my underlying autoimmune disease for two years now. That's crazy. And and in, in those two years, since you started not feeling well, may I ask, how many doctors did you have to go through looking for answers to try to figure out what's going on? So many doctors and so just so many rabbit holes that I got sent down and so many misdiagnoses and so many protocols that, you know, had nothing to do with mold and, and only to find out that my levels of mold, three different species are off the charts. Wow. That's incredible. So you, and, and did you know at the time where this mold could have been coming from? Well, when, you know, as I told you, I started working with Dr. Will Cole's team to figure out, you know, why I have hypothyroid, um, which is the autoimmune disease I have. One of the questions on the questionnaire they asked me was, have you been exposed to mold? And I, I put yes, and I crossed it out and put no, because I said, there's no way that's what it's from. Um, and we'll definitely get into that story here in a bit. So I really thought there was zero possibility only to find out that that small possibility of mold where I know where it came from was the reason for all of this. Yeah. And I, and I know Dr. Cole pretty well, a uh, great colleague of mine. He helps a lot of people through this. And you know, what, what I love about Dr. Will Cole is he does ask right about mold exposure uh, as part of the practice. And that's, that's not the norm, right? And it needs to be the norm because as you know, uh, going through this, you know, a lot of doctors miss that box. They miss that mark. And that for some people, that is the answer exactly that they need. So they can start to figure out, okay, how do I improve this? How do I get rid of this? How do I get on that, that track to heal? Um, so you went through several doctors before finding someone like Will Cole. You were like, no way, this can't be it. Yeah. Uh, what, what brought you back around to realize that maybe it could be it? When we went over my test results. So he tested me for a myriad of things. I, I've never given so much blood in my life. I thought I had nothing left to give. And, and then, of course, we did a mold test. So not only did the mold test come back positive for three different species of mold, but it showed up on two other tests not even related to mold. That's how bad it was. So that, to me, was obviously the smoking gun. And I've literally had doctors, aside from hypothyroid, uh, uh, diagnose me with uh, prediabetes. I was literally injecting myself in my leg, and I thought this was going to be for the rest of my life, only to find out that that was inaccurate information. I've had people just cut out all this random stuff saying, you know, it's from me getting coronavirus, this, you know, undid this in my genes, all these answers and all these things I was chasing. And I'm a very pragmatic person. And to me, this is actual data and facts. And the facts, you know, I have the mycotox test, the levels are literally off the charts, couldn't be higher. But for it to show up on two other tests was really astonishing. Yeah, that is really astonishing. You know, it's interesting, you said it, there's, there's data, right? You have data. Um, we're seeing correlation of data in people's homes with data in people's bodies. I mean, it's there, it's plain as day. Um, and so it, with that being said, there's a lot of technological advancements that have allowed us to really understand more about this problem, more about how it impacts people, the symptoms that they're experiencing, and how important air quality is to this police piece of the puzzle for this holistic health. Uh, so, you know, I'm sorry for what you went through and going down all these rabbit holes, looking for answers, not getting any, but super glad that you found Will Cole and he helped, uh, put the piece of the puzzle together for you. Where do you, where do you think you got the mold exposure? Let's dive into that a bit. So this is quite the story and I'm very happy to be sharing it on your podcast because I hope it could be a wake up call to people. Um, in 2019, I was living between Los Angeles and New York city, I had one of those, I thought, cool apartments in New York, like a duplex. So there was like basement space and like little upstairs space. Really not cool. 
Um, and I remember getting an email from the building saying emergency water shut off leak in the basement. I was one of two apartments in the basement. I thought nothing of it at the time. I said, the apartments got it. They know I'm by coastal and they obviously went and dealt with it. So I didn't think anything of it. I didn't need to go to New York until about two months later. So I sent my maid ahead of me to go clean my place. And she walks in there and she gives me a call. She's like, Melissa, I don't know what you want me to do. The place is covered in mold. And I, I was like, what? So, and I'm on the flight because I had to be there for work and I contact the building and, you know, I told them the situation and my friends were like, you can't stay there. You know, a lot of these times mold goes into the wall. So you don't even know it's there. And by the way, at the time I didn't even know that. So I took their advice. I got a hotel room and sure enough, they, they went and read it and they wouldn't even let me back in only for like little things I had to grab. And, you know, you know, better than anyone for them to say six month remediation, that's pretty bad mold. Like yeah. I've had it done. Um, at my, I, I, people I know it's places like three day remediation. So that was the first kind of red flag. Then they let me break the lease. We had like this huge uh, pissing match over like the dry cleaning bill for my clothes and then whatever, they remediated the place. I talked to the remediators, made them get the furniture very good in my shoes. Um, I shipped that stuff to my place in LA, closed out of New York and thought, okay, that's fine. That's a wrap. And then 10 months later, like clockwork, I started gaining weight out of nowhere. And, you know, I'm, you know, as you announced me into acting and modeling the sec, and I'm also a Jersey girl, as we discussed. <laughs> so I definitely like a chicken parm. But if I start to gain weight, I throw the kitchen sink at it. I, I'm, you know, dieting, I'm exercising. And no matter what I was doing, the weight wouldn't go off of me. And then I got really bad brain fog, which I remember being like shaming myself for a year because here I am running this health and wellness company saying it helps with brain fog and I can't believe I have brain fog and I'm thinking I already have like burnout and my girlfriend kept telling me you know you I think you have what I have you should go see my endocrinologist I went sure enough she was right I had hypothyroid and also the misdiagnosis of um, pre-diabetes so that's where this journey began. And they put me on Synthroid, Metformin, Ozempic, and a steroid. So I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on medicines for the rest of my life. I thought I was a healthy person. And, you know, my family members are so healthy. And then I made actually a New Year's resolution this year uh, to get off all my medications. So that was the big thing to find out the source of all of this. And even from there, I worked with the wrong people and in the natural health world, you really have to be careful who you choose. Like I, I remember I had this one person uh, and I really hope they don't watch this episode because I'll feel really bad, <laughs> but I, I'm a little bit woo woo, but not all that much. And if it helps you, God bless. But I remember they started giving me like an allergy test through zoom and putting like an energy field around a girl that works for them and seeing what I was allergic to holding it up to like a complete stranger. And I don't know, it was very odd. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So that didn't work odd. Um, and then I like I started, data. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big data girl. Yeah. Um, and then when I started working with Dr. Will Cole, I, I was very, very thrilled, not only with him, but his team. And I had my trepidations because the person prior was kind of, you know, big in this space and, you know, and then I thought maybe I should just find someone just very specialized. That's kind of not in this world of podcasts and what have you. And he couldn't have proved me wrong more. Like he he's brilliant. His team is brilliant. They hold your hand. And uh, I think they saved my life. Like, honestly, I was going down. A, I developed an autoimmune disease in 10 months and I had severe brain fog and I'm, I'm getting my life back. I'm two weeks into the protocol and I couldn't be happier with knowing that I have found the source to my problem. And the scarier part is 
is how many people have it and do not know and will never know the reason to their underlying conditions because they won't do the most simple thing in the world because no one tells them to just get tested for mold. Yeah, you know what? It's it's really scary. Um, it really is. Uh, do you want to know a crazy statistic? The World Health Organization says that nine out of 10 people do not breathe clean air. 90% of the world's population does not breathe clean air. Another crazy statistic, over 50% of the world's population deals with at least one chronic condition. Wow. Those are some statistics. We have doctors all over the world that are looking for answers. They're just looking in the wrong places. You know, yeah. and I think that's really what it comes down to. And, you know, it's changing, right? I've been doing this for about 10 years now, and uh, there's definitely way more doctors more aware of environmental impacts on our health and well-being, uh, you know, mental health too, right? There's a lot there. There's a lot of studies linking anxiety and depression, uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and, and dementia uh, to poor air quality. Um, Dr. Bredesen's doing great work on inhalational Alzheimer's, as he calls it. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. I mean, it makes sense to me. We take 20,000 breaths per day, right? And that's a you lot. Know, when we talk, right, it's a lot. And when we talk about, you know, illness, right? Um, bacteria, viruses, inhalation is the greatest route of exposure, right? We learned through COVID that you were inhaling it. You were, it's not like you were touching things and getting it that way. It was more through air transmission, right? I think it's the first yeah. time that the population heard the word air transmission. So we are waking up to this, but unfortunately, there are so many people out there that still struggle. They just, they struggle to wrap their head around it. And part of it is because mold is, um, it's infinitely small. It's 25 to 50 times smaller than what the eye can see, right? So yeah. I think COVID made us realize, uh, at least in modern times, that there's something that is so small that can make you sick, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's really kind of turned, turned a, a new wave for us. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy when you pair all these statistics together, you know, you start to look at the bigger picture. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, everybody should know that air quality is important to their health. It's, it's super important. And this whole journey with mold has been getting me so into, you know, a mix of this and biohacking and being really informed. I'm starting to switch everything over from makeup to skincare everything uh, to cleaning products to everything clean 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 because in my opinion you you know you don't go crazy over it, otherwise you're not going to cure yourself from mold because there's a bit of the limbic system that plays into this with the whole fight or flight mode but to me just just not only hearing these statistics but knowing how damaging our environment could be you might as well control what you can and leave the rest up to mother nature so you want to want to hear something pretty crazy um uh molecule gifted me one of their air purifiers i've been playing around with it and uh what i what i like about the ui of it the user interface is it kind of tells you when v vocs go up or humidity goes up and uh we're using a cleaning product and it's, a, it's supposed to be like a botanical cleaning product right and you know i, I don't have the time to research every little thing in my house right like who does but you, I'm using this cleaning product to like wipe down the counter or something. The molecule says the VOCs go off the charts, right? No. Right. So, cause it, obviously there's some sort of chemical in there. So I started diving into this. I'm not going to mention any names, but I started diving into but this I wanna know. and I realized like, they're not actually as botanical as they say they are. Like this will blow your mind, but there's different levels of botanical apparently. And so you can, as long as you're X amount percent botanical, you can have that botanical label, but you don't have to be hundred percent botanical, which means there could be some chemicals still in there. So this is just like, this just has me in an uproar, but um, I'm starting to realize like our household chemicals are really, really important, right? Microplastics, we have formaldehyde and all the crap that we buy and put together in our, our furniture and our living rooms and bedrooms. You know, we have mold, we have bacteria. It's like, you know, where do you, where do you draw a line? Right. It's, it's so difficult. Um, it's almost become like a luxury to have clean air, right. You have yeah. to, or, or you have to ha be extremely educated, know what to buy, what not to buy. Um, so you're right. I mean, I, I've been uh, getting more into the biohacking community myself because, you know, I'm, I'm desperately trying to learn just from, for myself and my family. And 
for others that are looking for information. How do we get healthy, right? It's, it's like the, one of the hardest things to accomplish. Um, which by the way, if you're in LA, I'll be speaking with Will Cole actually at the biohacking conference. I just uh, got September. my ticket today, literally That's awesome. today. Good. Yeah. That'll be great. And I'm going to do a whole presentation on mold and stuff like that. So I think, uh, oh, I it'll, it'll it. be, yeah, you'll, you'll really, really enjoy it. Um, when, when we're talking about, you know, your house, so it doesn't sound like you stayed there a lot. No. Uh, and so was it, do you think you got this exposure actually moving your belongings across the country? I, I strongly think so just because of the time frame. I was perfectly healthy. And 10 months later after this, like clockwork is when I started to get these symptoms and those items were living with me. And it took some time too to ship it to California and have it live with me. Um, so that's where I strongly assume it came from. Yeah. It's the well, only it time sense. I knew as a ringer it was mold and you know, I remember the woman who was in charge of management. She's like, I have allergies. Like I was coughing like a canary. And they said that like the levels were just, you know, beyond off the charts. And that's also what my maid saw from the interior before the interior um, was cleaned. So tell me, like to your best of your recollection anyway, what what did the remediation company supposedly do to your belongings before you moved them? They, they HEPA vacuum them? Yes. They took them and HEPA vacuumed, and I remember I would pop in there, stupidly as it turns out, um, and just to like, check up on them and, you know, talk to them, make sure I'm, I'm OCD even, like, before the mold. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would have them, you know, make sure they have a vacuum. They were really nice guys. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're doing extra special care. And so they just went through everything with a HEPA vacuum. But now, from going down this mold rabbit hole, you know, I see that the molecules are just so incredibly small that there's no real proper way to clean it up. I hear that you should just dispose of everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it obviously all depends. So, you know, we'll talk about HEPA vacuums for a second, um, you know, just to give you some frame of mind. I think it'll help other people listening to this too. But HEPA vacuums, they exhaust air back out, right? So they suck air in, it exhausts air back out, it creates this vacuum. Um, the problem is, is even though they have filters on them that trap tiny particles, there's still an exhaust, right? Mold's very small. It's very light. That exhaust, just of turning the vacuum on and that air pushing out the vacuum, it's stirring all this stuff up. And so unless you have that exhaust vented outside so that it's not stirring or moving up air in the room you're cleaning, you know, it's, it's essentially like as they're cleaning, they're kicking stuff up, it's settling back down on your stuff. And it just creates this, this circle of what am I doing? Um, the best way to do it is to wet wipe, you know, kind of like what they do in asbestos removal. They wet it, then they cut it, then they remove it because it suppresses the water droplets, suppress it from being aerosolized. Um, so if they had wet wiped your furniture, um, obviously there's certain things you can't wet wipe, like a couch, that fabric couch, for example. But all the things, if they would have wet wiped it uh, really thoroughly, then moved it you probably would have been able to keep a lot of your hard goods like glass, metal, plastic, sealed wood, um, just as an example. But a lot of these guys don't know that because the whole industry is like HEPA vacuum, HEPA vacuum, HEPA yeah. vacuum. But yes, the theory behind the vacuum is great. The execution of it though, you know, it doesn't work. Uh, not in the way that they're using it for contents. Um, now you could HEPA vacuum like a couch and you could remove some of those settled spores. But if we talk about how small mold is for a second, remember I said earlier, 25 to 50 times smaller than what the eye can see. So like picture your couch and then picture it being under a microscope. It's going to zoom in 25 to 50 times larger. And with that being said, like those threads are going to look like gaping holes at that level. So something as small as mold is going to get embedded into the couch. And then guess what happens every time you sit down? It's like a cloud. It'll just, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. So I guess I have to go back to my shoes and wet wipe them. <laughs> Gotta go back to your shoes, wet wipe them, uh, you know, clean your place. And that'll be obviously a much more effective way to, to deal with the problem. And you're right. Like some things you will have to make that tough decision of throwing away, especially knowing that there's a potential to impact your, your home. Um, and so it, it took you how long to realize that 
that you had cross cross contaminated, as we say? Two years. Um, actually, about a year and a half. The second I was diagnosed with hypothyroid, then it took me, you know, to this year um, to find my New Year's resolution, and then I guess I got the results from Dr. Will Cole about two two months and a week ago. <laughs> Very specific. Two months and a week ago. Very that is very specific. Well, when you get the answers that you need, you know, it's easy to remember that date. Uh, oh, of especially course. after kind of the rabbit holes that you know uh, yourself and other people go through with this. It's just so it's so uh, just so troubling to see all the suffering that happens before people find out what they need to know. Um, how can I support you with with what you have need to do now? I mean, do you just need to go? go nuts cleaning at this point? I think I need to go nuts cleaning. I've been doing this protocol, which has been a big part of it. Um, But now, you know, I, I got the dust particles tested around the shoes and stuff. I've not heard back from the company and I submitted it a month ago. So I I guess I need to find out if I'm still being exposed to mold. I could say with confidence, I don't have, and I, I moved back to New York. So I I'm living in a place I've never lived in before sure some of my shoes are with me but none of that furniture so I'm trying to figure out if the shoes are becoming you know a big source of getting that measured and finding out you know I know despite my experience that mold is in about or at least there's water damage to 50 percent of buildings in America um I'm sure you would know that fact better than than I so you know I just want to make sure where I'm living is safe for me to breathe and, and get better because, you know, you could do all the protocols in the world, but it it's not going to help as much in living in an environment with super clean air. You're totally right. Um, and I will make sure that we ship you a dust test so you can check that out for yourself and make sure you get the answers you need. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely something we can do in our real house and help you analyze that and make sure that, you know, your place is safe. We find something that is elevated or not normal. We can kind of walk through what the steps are to make sure that it's healthy. Um, and as far as like your, your stuff that you brought that still is there, you know, can definitely walk you through cleaning, what to, to clean and stuff like that, but essentially wet wipe. So, there's a couple of different options. You can get like Benefect wipes that literally come in wipe form and you can just wipe thing, wipe things down thoroughly. Um, or you can get like the solution and microfiber towels and actually clean your stuff with that. Um, and the rule of thumb to know if something's clean, uh, just so you're aware, because we're dealing with microscopic particles. If you clean something and then you like look at the towel and you see residue on it, it's not clean. So if you clean, so if you do that, you clean it again until you look at the towel and it looks like it just came out of the the bag, right? Brand new. That's the level of clean that things need to be. So you want to go do that. Anything that you brought your to from your other place to this place, you want to do that. And then once that's done, clean the whole place because, you know, there, there may have been some transference of some of these particles, toxins, et cetera, just into the living environment. So then clean the stuff, clean the dust from the place, uh, the same exact way. And then you'll definitely have a healthier environment from that cross-contamination. Now, if there's a source in your place producing particles, toxins, that's going to continuously get in your dust, which we'll obviously have to figure out and address if that's the case as well. But you know, for you and others that are listening, listening that may have cross-contaminated or something in the past, those tips are fantastic tips for people. What about something like suede shoes and cookware? So cookware can easily be wiped down as well. Uh, suede shoes a little more challenging because, you know, obviously they're suede and wiping them down is not something that uh, is always effective. Um, you know, if when, when you're looking at it from a term of mold free versus I would say more mold resilient, uh, you're looking more for mold resilient, you know, because mold's part of our ecosystem. We can't build bubbles around our houses. So if everything is clean besides maybe a pair or two of suede shoes and you do your best cleaning those suede shoes, you send them out to be cleaned by a professional textile cleaner or something of that nature, you know, if you get it 99% or 98% clean, odds are that's going to to make a big difference for you. Yeah. Oh gosh, this whole thing. I, I, I know. It's hard to remember like which shoes were in that place. Like I have a rough idea. Just clean them all. Just clean I, them all. I have a lot of all. shoes, Michael. <laughs> uh, you know, I bet you do. 
I bet you do. But I think that when it comes down to the fact of trying to improve your health, you know, let's try to not leave any stones unturned, you know, and make sure we do uh, a good cleanup. And I know that's overwhelming to hear. Oh, no, it, it's so worth it. The fact that I've answers, the fact that I thought I had burnout, the fact of so many things. And even my skin, you I mean, you can't really tell right now. But I, I swear, I, I remember at the beginning of this whole thing, I had, I still have it to an extent, like really, really, really bad rosacea. I've never had it in my life. And it came out of nowhere. It came two months before the hypothyroid hit. And I literally like cut out soy milk, thought maybe it was soy. And I still have it, but it's finally getting better from the protocol, which is very That's exciting. Awesome. But it almost ironically looked like mold. And I would throw every laser at it, every face cream, every diet, and it was just staying. It's because I had all all I have all this toxicity in me and hopefully totally. a lot less two months in, but we'll see. I'm getting retested in uh in I think October. Good. It is a journey, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure Dr. Will Cole has told you that I'm sure doing all the research you've done, you know, you've, you've heard that before mold mold is one of the interesting things about mold is the skin issues that it causes. I mean, I've seen the most insane things. You almost never believe it. I walk into a woman's house one time. Um, this was in New York and, uh, she literally was like covered head to toe in like these red rashes. Man, and it was like, I was like, oh my God, like, does it hurt? You know, I've, I just felt so horrible. Um, but it's, it's like just the strangest things can happen to somebody. Obviously every single person's different. What they experience is different, but skin issues is one of the, one of the most common symptoms that I hear about all the time of people going through this. So, yeah. um, hopefully, you know, getting out of the exposure, following the protocol, um, you know, and doing some of the things that you're doing, uh, will be good. And you said that you're about two months into this protocol, two months in. Yep. And I have to say, I'm definitely feeling a lot better and sleep is one of the most important parts. And <laughs> it's so sad. I got this adorable new puppy a month before I knew, but boy, having a new puppy, you don't sleep, but I, I but some mornings now when I just feel puppy aside, just so, so, so tired out of nowhere and got a lot of sleep. That wasn't the issue. It's just crazy how much having this toxicity really takes it out of you. Yeah. Chronic fatigue, you know, it's one, another, another very common symptom. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people don't understand chronic fatigue. If you haven't experienced it, you know, it's not, it's like it, you imagine sleeping eight hours and waking up and feeling like you slept too, right? Like that's, yeah. that's really what it's like. And you, you've slept fine. You know, if you wore like a tracker, you would see that like you had good sleep. It's just, you just don't feel refreshed, right? There you go. The aura. Got my aura ring yeah. uh, measuring kit next to me. Right. So you're looking at that. I'm sure oh, like, yeah. I don't understand. I slept like I should, I should feel great, but you're just so groggy and tired. And, you know, it's like, um, and I say that because so many people tell me like when they're dealing with family that doesn't understand you know, they'll be like, you know, why are you so tired all the time? Like, why are you, you, you know, you're just lazy. It's like, no, you, you really yeah. can't, you really are not energized. Like it, when you wake up. No, it, it's true. It's very sad. And it's very difficult to deal with if someone doesn't understand and people could try their best to understand. But, and that's also what I like about working with Dr. Will Cole every week we meet up and it's like a, a most, a most of the people on the call are affected by mold and it's like a mold support group. Right. Yeah. So we all yeah. talk about it, ask our questions, but wow, it's, it's something. And some, a question I have for you and um, this is something I mean to dig into more. Cause I, I, all I do now is like, listen to mold podcasts. I become completely obsessed. And I know about 30% of the population doesn't methylate well, which is, I'm one of those people. But then I listened to, it was one of Dave Asprey's podcasts and the person he had on pretty much said that chronic mold exposure over time, mold wants to attack the host and bring them down. So they, the mold effectively attacks your methylation so that you become one of the 30%. So I just wonder which it is, or is it somehow maybe a little bit of a hybrid? You know, I think, I think if I answered that question, it would be speculation because I don't know that we technically have enough medical and clinical data to be able to prove that. 
um, you know, it's kind of a, what came first, the chicken or the egg scenario. Right. And yeah. I don't know that we have that answer right now. Um, I suspect, I can tell you that I suspect that it causes issues, right? I, yeah. I, this is what I suspect, but to be able to say with on a, a shadow of a doubt, it would be, you know, incorrect of me to do that. Um, the thing is like, when I look at all the, the patterns of people that I've seen, you know, these are, I, I've had clients that have done triathlons, like they were, you know, some of the most athletic and healthiest people on the planet. And after mold, they're in a wheelchair. I mean, it, it's, so it's sad. insane. Right. And, you know, it's what else happened? Nothing else happened. Right. Not the only thing that happened is they had a water damage event. Now, of course, doctors are coming up with all of these diagnoses of what happened, but it doesn't make sense, right? How they all of a sudden just literally fell off the, the health map here. Um, yeah. And so when you really start to look at this, I think there's a lot of unanswered questions that we have on the clinical side. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that um, I'm so excited about the dust test in itself is because of that data, being able to take that data correlate it with medical data from like Dr. Will Cole as an example, connecting that with researchers, having the academia look at everything and start to weigh in and start to be able to come up with things that we can actually test, tangible uh, hypotheses. Because right now we're just in the state where you have doctors like Will Cole who are like, yes, mold, mold toxicity is very real. Then you have doctors on the other side of the fence that are like mold toxicity is not, is impossible. It is not real. Mold has been around forever. And it's like that line of thinking is very dangerous because, yeah. you know, if you're going to say mold has been around forever, why don't you read the Bible and talk? It, literally, there's a mold remediation protocol in the Bible in Leviticus. Yeah. They had, yes, if you read the Bible, I swear to God, it says that uh, basically if somebody had mold growing in their home and their homes are made out of stone, by the way. So just to give a little bit of reference, but if your home was, was had mold, uh, you were instructed to scrub it all down and remove the mold, try to remove the mold from the, uh, the home. If the priest came back and, and he would bless it, but if he came back, you know, a week later and the mold have, has come back, they would literally knock the entire stone house down and carry the stones a mile away and dump them away so that it didn't cross contaminate in other parts of the home. Wow. So we knew about mold, right? It's been around forever. It's been a problem forever, right? We just choose choose when to believe, uh, you know, certain things or not. It's this is why history repeats itself because we neglect to look at history, right? So when I when some of these, you know, doctors say some of these things, I mean, they have no basis to say that because they themselves have not been studying the possibilities, right? And yeah. so you also have in academia, uh, you have people that have never seen a home, who've never talked to a human being that's been impacted by mold, but yet they're researching. They have no construction experience, no understanding of how mold comes into the picture. They've never had to remove it. They've never really seen things in action. They've never seen the amount of people affected by it. And they say things like, well, maybe it's something else, right? Yeah. So it's, it's that's part of the sad story. And this is why I am started the nonprofit research, policy reform, education, uh, financial assistance, these are all things that, that need to happen. And we need to actually, if if air quality is as big of the piece of the pie chart as we believe that it is in terms of our health, it, it, we need a lot more attention on it than we currently have. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's rocked my world. I make, you know how some people like are obsessed with COVID and make everyone get tested. Mm -hmm. I was never like that about COVID. However, I'm like that about mold. <laughs> I make everyone get tested. I'm like, oh, oh, you should get tested because it's such a huge underlying issue. And yeah. my sister, she she just sent in her test last week, but she um had a doctor's appointment six months ago where, and she is like an, an insanely healthy individual, like. She doesn't put alcohol in her body. She doesn't put bad food in her body. She works out like a beast and her brain inflammation markers are like through the roof. So, yeah. and I'm like, hmm, hmm. hmm. Yeah. maybe you should be tested for mold, Michelle. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's, it's like the world needs people like you because you're creating awareness. Like you're telling people through your journey, like how this has impacted you. You don't want to see your friends and your loved ones get hurt. And, you know, it's, I'm sure just like anybody else, you're going to have friends and loved ones that are going to be like, yeah, I'm going to check that out. Right. And, and you'll probably have friends and loved ones that'll think, you know, you're wrong or that can't be true or that can't be it. And, 
you know, there's, there's a paradigm shift that's needed, but you're helping provide that paradigm shift, just like me, you know, out there telling people, look, wake up, this is it, this is real. So four, four people in my world have gotten tested. Two are waiting to hear back. Guess what? The first two have mold. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It and is. it's not like I'm taking a stab in the dark. They tell me things about their health journey. And I'm like, listen, like this sounds like it could be mold. Yeah. I, I, I'm completely obsessed. Well, it's good. It's, you know, it's good in a way that you're doing that. Like I said, cause it creates that awareness. It, it sucks that you've had to go through this to turn the lights on, you know, and I, I wish that myself and other professionals could do a better job getting those lights turned on, preventing people from getting this sick, you know, and, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now and hoping other people come on and join the fight. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about your, your protocols a bit. Um, and some of the stuff that's working well for you, I know you're not out of the woods yet, but, uh, I obviously your, your skin issues are starting to diminish. Yeah. You're, you're starting to feel uh, some relief. So, so tell us about that. What's your secret? Um, what are you doing and what's working best for you? So, uh, first of all, I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, the food part of this, because. I physically have an autoimmune disease. So that's why Dr. Will Cole put me on this. But pretty much right now, I have no dairy, no gluten, no nightshades or eggs. Um, and like I said, Jersey girl loves a chicken parm. I was like, whoa, I didn't think I would ever be able to do this, honestly. And no chocolate. That was also a, a big one because I, I love my sweets. I love, I love pizza, fried food. So and anytime I've tried to diet in my life, I've ended up failing. And so to be honest with you, once I got over it, for me, I think it was like a, like a two or three week hump. I don't crave it anymore, but it was very, very difficult. So I attribute that. And of course, uh, something I love saying the beginning part of the protocol, the largest part of it, which is just a major coincidence is bone broth. Um, I was initially on a two to four day bone broth fast. I made it two days. because, Like I said, I'm really bad at diets. And then for a week after that, all my meals had to be bone broth based soups. So it was kind of ironic. I started my company due to chronic digestive issues. And now it's kind of saving me in the sense from the mold. So now also too, I get like a little bit of choice fatigue. So I just have bone broth soup for lunch every day. And more things, a lot of it, like supplements. I'm doing, um, and this will be cool to talk about too, um, the Nutramedics drops. And from what I understand, like uh, the Stevia, I think is a biofilm that goes, I didn't know this about mold, but uh, you know, apparently the longer it's in you, it builds and gets like a larger and harder outer coat. So the biofilms go and break it down. And the rest of the drops kind of help to clear it out of your system. So I've been doing uh, that. I've been cleaning my nose with like, I actually hate this one. I don't recommend it unless you have severe mold poisoning like me, but cleaning my nose out with iodine. Sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. come out the other nostril and it gets stuck here and it hurts. Uh, I'm looking like in the bathroom right now to see everything I do. Uh, sweating is a huge, huge component yeah. of this. I use the higher dose sauna blanket. And I take my binders uh, 20 minutes before. And that was also something I thought I'd really struggle with because I was I can never be in a sauna longer than five minutes. But sweating has led to huge results for me. Uh, ones I'm very excited by. And I've been doing um some lymphatic drainage, like whether you get it professionally or you find tools or YouTube videos to do it yourself. I remember um, the first time this girl, Domi, she's great, came and like felt the area. She was like, they are so swollen because my body was just like detoxing over time. So it really helps too to, you know, help your body detox, especially I'm not someone who methylates well. That's been a huge one for me. And then I've tried like crazier things like um, this whole cat sauna, which like steams you, puts an O2 and... I remember talking to Will Cole's team and I really like them too because they're conservative. And I mentioned all my crazy ideas to them and they're like, listen, we want to do it slowly because if you do it a little fast, you know, you'll feel it, you'll get tired and you'll feel sick. I'll tell you what, 
the day, the week I did uh, the whole cat sauna and lymphatic drainage, I swear I got like the detox flu. I was really sick for three days. Like I, I, I thought I had COVID, which is, I thought I had the flu yeah. <laughs> and, and, but I didn't, I, I strongly think it was the detox flu. So you just have to do it in moderation to your own pace. And you know, on the opposite end of doing things like sweating, I like to do a cold plunge. Like I'm getting really into biohacking, just the fact that you could really help your body out. And something else I just started, which I think is the missing piece to all of this, is something called primal trust. And you and I, it sounds like we're people based on data and facts. And all here on podcasts or a lot of people talk about, you know, certain traumas you have, you know, affecting your healing and mold. And I thought that sounded a little woo woo. I'm like, how does, you know, if you've had trauma in your life correlate to healing from mold. And then I asked Dr. Will Cole's team, and I'm obviously not going to explain it as well as they, but pretty much if, if you've had a lot of trauma in your life and your limbic system, that switch, instead of turning off saying I'm no longer in danger, it stays on, it stays in the on position. So then your body is constantly in fight or flight, which actually like this year, this year has been like a really messed up year for me. I've had like a dog attack me. Like I had someone hit my car. I've had the mold. So I noticed like this year I'm in severe fight or flight. Like I know I, I like to, I, I drive a lot and I notice driving. I constantly like jerking, thinking like an accident's going to happen. And I've never been like that in my life. So I know I'm in fight or flight. So this primal trust uh, retrains your brain and uh, which is very challenging to do. You have to be patient with it, but really helps your limbic system to calm down and go back to the off pattern. And Dr. Will Cole's team said that, look, the clients who do primal trust or I think it's called like DNSR. It's like a different yeah. version of brain training. It doesn't have to be either of the two, just whatever works for you. Um, that he found that they could go back to the things they eliminated like months quicker um, because it heals their nervous system. And then your nervous system could relax and like take to the things you're doing to support your body in the healing process. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. You know, um, I, I am a data guy for sure, but when it comes to the mind and trauma, I think that's an entirely different subject that yeah. just doesn't equate data well at all. Um, you know, I actually went on a retreat with Deepak Chopra not too long ago, and I'm actually interviewing him again tomorrow. And that was the first time I learned like meditation, uh, you know, the, all the amazing work he's doing with mental health. Um, and uh, I'll <laughs> just to tell you a funny story. Uh, it's funny now anyway, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, we're going up this mountain. We're like in the middle of Utah and, um, where uh, we did some exercise, essentially like this meditation. And uh, in, in this, in this meditation, we had this round table discussion essentially, and it was about past trauma. Right. And um, I guess I had this repressed memory. Like I just didn't remember it. Um, but it was essentially when I was a kid getting bullied and uh, you know, I'm like five years old and I was like thinking suicidal thoughts and, Aww. you know, all this crazy stuff. And I guess, the entire ride down the mountain. Cause we took like kind of ATVs up there. Um, I'm just bawling, crying. I'm like this grown man crying from this repressed memory from when I was five. And I, I think what, what, when I, when I kind of unpacked all of that, what I realized is that I was more upset about the fact that someone who could be five years old, who's just starting their life, could be, you know, uh, that upset, you know, about life and think it's not worth living. Um, and it just, it really connected and with me. And, um, I started to realize then that there's a big part of mental health and trauma into all of this. Um, and the work that he's doing is just so, so inspiring on that front. Um, he's got a bot that, that literally will talk to people when they have, they're having suicidal thoughts to, you know, have meaningful conversations and, you know, basically show them that life is worth living. Um, and so it's just, it's just really inspiring, but yeah, I mean, there's no data on mental health. There just yeah. isn't, um, but there's something there and there's something there with trauma too. And I think there's definitely a connection there. So uh, no, I, I wanted to share that because it's, it's something out of the box that we don't typically hear a lot. Totally. And, you know, just like I mentioned earlier when that woman was like, doing things to see if I was allergic based on some stranger and an energy field on zoom. 
Um, you know, I'm just like, that just doesn't do it for me. But just hearing even in the videos of primal trust, like hearing the real science behind the limbic system and, you know, the way your brain is wired and the three different parts of your brain where it kind of connects made a lot of sense to me. And I really, really resonated with it. Um, I, I, I got to find a way to download that video off the thing and I'll share it with you. I think you'll find it fascinating and it heals people a lot quicker during the mold remediation. Some people don't need it. So, and that's great, but you know, and you know, if you're dealing with mold toxicity, there's already a lot on your plate. You're dealing with sure. your home, you're dealing with all these protocols and sweating. And uh, I, I just know I've had a lot of trauma in my life. So I'm like, I know that for sure it would catch up with me one day and it sure has nothing to do with the mold but yeah. it could be a reason why it keeps me in this mold world if i don't change my fight or flight system because i very much see it see it on right now being jumpy about things from my traumatic year yeah no and i'm a big believer in you know what works for people works right and that's all that matters you know um with dnrs i've heard great things i've heard remarkable things i've never experienced it myself but um, a lot of my clients have, and they've, they've had a lot of great success with it. And so that's all that matters, you know? And I think when it comes to that, if something's working for you, you go for it. Right. And I don't, I, I never like one of these people who won't try something new. Like I've had a similar interaction, um, that, that you talked about with the energy fields and stuff. Um, you know, I, I have no problem trying anything and seeing how, what the effects are. And if it works, it works. I think that's all that matters. I want to dive into your bone broth a bit. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're getting close to the end and I want to make sure we cover this because uh, I had bone cavitation surgery like a year ago now and was essentially living off bone broth for like an entire week. Uh, so I know, I know like, you know, with the protein it packs, it's like you, you can't beat it. Um, tons of great vitamins and nutrients in there. So go ahead and explain a little bit about your company, why you started a bone broth company and all of the amazing benefits that we get at Beauty in the Broth. Perfect. And also, I'm going to send you some bone broth. You send me the dust kit, I'll send you some bone broth. Fair trade. Fair trade. Uh, so beauty in the broth, my 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 fourth puppy. Uh, I started it in 2019, launched it almost two years ago. And I started this company because I had really, really chronic digestive issues to the point that I almost got held back from school because I missed so many days and then out of the hospital, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. Literally, I was just chronically backed up with stool. Like the some some doctor somewhere along the way found it in an X-ray. So that's all it was. And you know, with that being said, it wasn't passing for a reason. I had you know gut issues, which a lot of people do. A lot of people suffer from IBS, just poor digestion, you name it. And you know, like I you might have gotten a picture of me just from saying how much I love chicken parm 50 times. I was never a very healthy person. To me, health was looking in the mirror and, and seeing, you know, if you looked overweight or the right weight. And so I, that's all I, I thought. And, you know, my sister kept trying to get me to try bone broth saying how good it is for you and it could help me and I would never try it. And then finally I felt really inflamed and sick and where my initial brain fog started. And so I said, okay, let me try this bone broth. So at the time I was living full-time in LA and I visited her in New York and there was a lot of places to get it hot on the go. Um, and I couldn't believe how I felt after drinking bone broth and not only fixed my digestive issues. Um, I'm someone that's like very into skincare and, you know, I'd openly say I'd get bone Botox when I was like 25 years old. And the second it wore off, it was like, oh my gosh, like my crow's feet. And I'd have to, you know, run to the doctor. <laughs> bone broth got rid of that timer. And aside from the beauty aspects, it got rid of my brain fog, which I was massively confused by at the time. And it also helped. I played sports in New Jersey. <laughs> And mm -hmm. I played field hockey, I actually played your school in field hockey. <laughs> and I got a lot of uh, damaged cartilage in my right knee to the point that when I would ski or whatever, I'd always have to wear a knee brace because of the pain I would feel, you know, during wear and tear of sports like that. And it got rid of that pain completely because it's so high in natural occurring collagen. So what's unique 
about beauty in the broth is number one sourcing. Uh, just like, you know, we touched about something before. Yes, the cleaning products where it's no different in the food world. You could be tricked really easily by the marketing of a product, even if it says organic, even if it says, you know, all these bells and whistles on the front of the packaging, turn it over, look at the back, look at the every ingredient. Um, you'd be really, really surprised. And I'm, I'm very proud to say we're USDA organic for both the beef and chicken. And our sourcing is impeccable. You could trace it back, effectively farm to pouch. And it's all the most upright sourcing from free range, uh, chicken without antibiotics or hormones, grass fed, grass finished beef. And there's no fillers, nothing in the ingredients. It's all very, very clean. And then to boot, here's the kicker. It's three ounces of potent concentrate. So we effectively steam it to reduce it down so that you're getting only the strongest, um, most potent part of the bone broth. So every pouch is effectively 25 bricks, which is the measure of solids in bone broth. And to give you kind of like, you know, that means nothing to someone as it did to me initially. And if you get like a cup of bone broth from a pop-up shop or, you know, pour a cup from a supermarket, that cup you pour is on average three to five bricks. So mm. to have 25 bricks in that pouch and then the customer is the one who puts the hot water in it. Um, we recommend just putting eight ounces of hot water into your favorite mug or this cool rice husk cup that comes with some of the orders. Um, so it's also unique because you could bring it anywhere on the go to integrate into your routine. Why do you want bone broth a part of your routine? Digestive issues apparently are just scratching the surface. And what bone broth does, which is very important, is it goes into your gut and it it fills it and lines your gut with almost like like a, a stocking lining and fills in those holes called some bad digestion. Because when you have poor digestion, food will seep through your gut and cells will fight it thinking it's an invader and then you'll get a ton of inflammation. So bone broth literally like patches up your gut and pumps you with natural occurring collagen, which is very important because your body stops producing collagen at around age 30 and then it just depletes from there. So to get a good source of collagen, I highly recommend bone broth, not bone broth powder, but bone broth because it's the most bioavailable way for your body to absorb collagen. And in this whole mold journey, it was crazy because I, you could have just imagined my like shit eating grin. Sorry, you could edit that out if I can't cuss on here. <laughs> when I saw my protocol, it was like two weeks of bone broth. I was like, <laughs> um, and then of course I asked Dr. Will Cole's team and they said, well, it's kind of remarkable because bone broth kind of helps draw out the mold. It's very, very good at hiding. So it's a great way to kick off a mold detox is, is a bone broth fast to kind of draw it out, help heal your gut, get that nice and strong um, and, and find out where it's hiding. Um, so it, it's kind of, I don't think it's a coincidence that this is now a whole new part of my journey with bone broth is the whole mold aspect. And for better or worse, it's my story. Everyone has their own. And of course, bone broth helps with brain fog and initially got rid of mine, which is why I felt so ashamed when I felt I had burnout. And and it was so hard on myself. I like feel bad for myself looking back because I, I was so ashamed and like wouldn't tell anyone. And and only to find out it was all caused by mold. Um, and, and starting a company, you're just like, are you kidding me? Like all this work I've been doing for years to launch this thing and now I feel like, you know, burnout and my periods of highs and lows. Uh, so glad I, I'm getting that situated. Um, but, you know, bone broth has been a huge part of my health journey from the start of digestive issues and finally getting on the bandwagon of health and nourishing your body and truly being you are what you eat um, to even now with the whole mold situation. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's really inspiring how what what you've been through and how you've kind of uh, you know started creating this product. How that product that you've created is helping you through your lowest times. I mean, that's that's just it's just wonderful Crazy. how that's 
how that's actually lined up. It's like the universe, uh, you know, telling you something for sure. Yeah. Uh, I know, I, I know I'm past 30 now, so, uh, I guess I don't produce collagen anymore. So I better start Me drinking both. bone broth, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> But, you know, um, I'm really excited to try the bone broth because like I said earlier, you know, bone broth, I was pretty much like that was what I was consuming for about a week. Not only did I lose like 10 pounds, by the way, uh, which was amazing, yeah, but great for weight loss. Um, I felt great. Right. And it's because I couldn't eat because my, you know, my mouth had holes in it, essentially. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I loved uh, besides like just the the fact of, you know, that I needed to have it. But um, I love the taste, actually. Like it tastes good. I do too. It's yeah. very, very comforting. Like all, all craving. Like I said, it gets rid of my choice fatigue at lunch, and uh, it's it's so tremendous for you if you don't want to just like have it. Like I do. If you have an issue with taste, you could also like literally with the concentrate, I'll cook with it. And it's I like to consider it a cooking hack because our chicken has turmeric and ginger in it, and our beef has leeks and mushrooms and onions. So you're getting like this really thick gelatinous base for your cooking just to put on things. I'll put it on fish. I'll, I'll put it on vegetables and you get the same benefit. That's, that's amazing. Where can people find beauty in the broth? Because if they're like me, they're going to be trying at least, at least trying it out. The beauty in the broth.com. Awesome. And it just ships right to your door. Ships right to your front door. And and your first box, not the starter pack, but your first box comes with that cool rice husk cup I talk about. Um, awesome. So, you know, you could obviously use your own mug, but it makes it really easy to bring it anywhere on the go with you. That's fantastic. Well, Melissa, I really appreciate you taking the time here to share your story. Uh, you know, the awareness that you're creating is is so remarkable. And I really appreciate that. Thanks for all the, the tips, uh, the bone broth. I'm excited to check that out. Uh, any other last parting words for folks as we wrap up? Go get tested. <laughs> yes. I know you'll be telling that at dinner parties coming soon. Oh, I just don't <laughs> stop talking about it. It's so bad. <laughs> That's amazing. Some people need to hear it. You know, and it's, it's the unfortunate truth. But I will see you next month at the biohacking conference yes, uh, yes. where I'll be speaking. And hopefully you enjoy the presentation I put together and looking forward to getting to meet you. I can't wait. And I'm looking forward to meeting you as well. And thank you so much for having me on. This is sincerely the podcast I'm most excited about. It's like my mold dreams. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that I can help provide a platform to share your story and empower others. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.